NATO dispute as the United States is accused of profiting off the Ukraine conflict, while the European Union flounders over gas costs. The most recent trade policies of Joe Biden have been labeled protectionist by European Union officials who are frustrated by the White House's failure to recognize their global effects. Vladimir Putin's plan of exploiting Russia's gas supply against the West is beginning to create discord inside NATO, with leading European officials accusing Joe Biden of profiting from this conflict. Multiple high-ranking officials from the bloc have accused the United States president of profiting from the opportunity offered by the invasion by increasing the prices of weaponry and gas. The disagreement stems from Brussels' rising annoyance with the White House's green tariffs and subsidies, which, according to the group, divert trade away from European-based sectors. A senior European Union official said, if you look at it realistically, the nation that is benefiting the most from this conflict is the United States because they are selling more gas at more excellent prices and more weapons. Someone said that we are indeed at a historic crossroads. The source noted that the combination of trade disruptions and rising energy costs jeopardized the United States' image with nations across the Atlantic. They said the United States must recognize that public opinion is moving in several European Union nations. Emmanuel Macron has also alleged that the United States' attitude to the European Union is unfriendly. The European Union's top diplomat, Josep Borrell, demanded that the United States recognize its influence on the European economy. In an interview with the same news station, he said that our allies, the United States, make choices that have an economic effect on us. However, the United States has refused to acknowledge that they affect the gas price in the European Union. A representative for Mr. Biden's National Security Council said that the increase in European gas prices directly results from Putin's invasion of Ukraine and his energy war against Europe. They also noted that the growing shipments of liquefied natural gas from the United States to Europe allowed Europe to diversify away from Russia. An American official emphasized that setting gas prices for European consumers is the product of private market choices and not United States government policy or action, stating that United States firms have been transparent and dependable providers of natural gas to Europe. The European Union has turned to the United States as a substitute for Russian gas to avoid indirectly subsidizing Putin's war and giving him power over them for the essential resource. However, Europeans claim that the price of petrol in the United States is roughly four times higher than in the United States. This dispute is exacerbated by increased requests for United States-made military equipment since the European Union's sale of weaponry to Ukraine has left them short. Mr. Macron even stated that the United States' high gas prices are unfriendly. Meanwhile, Germany's economics minister urged the United States to demonstrate more solidarity by decreasing their energy bills. According to a senior source, Mr. Biden was completely uninformed of the effect of high United States gas prices on the European Union when European Union leaders confronted him on the topic at last week's G20 summit in Bali. Other European Union officials and diplomats concurred that ignorance of the ramifications for Europe by the United States was a severe issue. David Kleiman of the Bruegel Think Tank stated that the Europeans' frustration with the lack of previous knowledge and consultation is evident. According to one European Union ambassador, it is not good optics to create the idea that your closest friend is profiting enormously from your difficulties. The high gas prices exacerbate tensions over Mr. Biden's Inflation Reduction Act, a massive tax, climate, and healthcare package for the United States. This prompted one European Union official to question whether the United States was still our ally. Fears of a transatlantic trade war are growing due to the package, which European Union officials fear threatens the viability of European industry. The United States has expressed skepticism that Russia has sufficient artillery to sustain a full-scale invasion of Ukraine since Moscow uses more ammunition than it can replenish. Wednesday, United States Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin told reporters that the Russians have battled with logistics from the beginning of the conflict and continue to do so now. He stated that they are facing severe shortages of artillery ammunition and have reached out to Iran and North Korea for assistance. Over the last nine months, Russia has lost hundreds of armored vehicles and pieces of artillery, at least 71 helicopters, and over 1,000 tanks. According to a website that tracks the loss of military equipment in Ukraine, 
Since the beginning of the conflict on February 24th, Russia's capability to produce precision-guided missiles has been eroded by Western sanctions. As a result, the country's ability to replace damaged equipment has been drastically diminished. According to Austin, Russian troops depend primarily on artillery, firing many rounds before ground maneuvering, an activity that demands considerable ammunition. Austin said he is still determining whether Russia has the necessary munitions to support this in the future. He is still determining if Russia can quickly replenish lost ammunition. The Defense Studies Department at King's College London's Marina Myron said that there seems to be no reliable estimate of how many missiles Russia still has, even though similar assertions have been made in the past, beginning in April. For example, according to some sources, Russia was almost out of missiles by the end of April. On November 23, 2022, Ukrainian intelligence reported that Russia had expended 50% of its missiles. Myron noted that although it is unknown how many missiles and ammunition remain in Russia's stockpiles, it is apparent that Russia has used a considerable lot of missiles and artillery rounds and will need to replace its stores, which may be much more difficult given the current sanctions. Myron said that if Russia cannot replace its supplies domestically, it may be prudent to acquire cheaper ammunition and missiles outside. The Kremlin has reached out to Iran and North Korea for this reason. Myron stated that while it is unknown how much artillery Russia is importing, it is more significant that other nations, such as Iran and North Korea, are willing and able to provide Russia with ammunition, missiles, and drones faster than Russia can produce them on its own, and likely for less money. Therefore, even if imported goods are inferior to Russian-made ones, it makes much more sense for Russia to import them since it cannot afford to use up all of its stockpiles, and manufacturing takes time and necessitates the procurement of additional components, such as microchips in the case of missiles. However, the special military operation in Ukraine may be less concerned with accuracy, though the Iranian Fateh 110 and Zulfagar provide precision, than with the capacity to unleash a deluge of fire, which requires a vast amount of artillery rounds. Undoubtedly, Russia conducted a cost-benefit study before making these acquisitions. Moreover, Russia can outsource its manufacture by collaborating with Iran. Who is equipping Russia? Iran and North Korea are the only two nations currently known to transfer weaponry to Russia. Both countries are subject to international sanctions, and North Korea is shut off from the world economy. According to a declassified American intelligence dossier dated the beginning of September, Russia is purchasing millions of artillery rounds and missiles from North Korea. Iran recently supplied Russia with hundreds of explosive drones and other guided munitions and is reportedly prepared to deploy 1,000 more weapons, including ballistic missiles and other attack drones, to Russia. Myron said this is a fantastic chance for Iran and North Korea to generate money, test their technology in combat, and demonstrate their dislike of the Western world. Regarding Russia's dependence on these nations, the adage the enemy of my enemy is my friend remains true. In addition to economic and military factors, geopolitical factors influence Russia's conduct. Establishing ties with so-called rogue governments provides a counterweight to what Russia regards as Western domination in international affairs. How long can Russia continue to fight? According to Myron, this will depend on how swiftly Russia achieves its military objectives. We must distinguish between artillery rounds used on the battlefield and missiles used to hit targets deep inside Ukraine. According to Myron, missile attacks on Ukrainian cities may reduce after Russia thoroughly damages the Ukrainian electrical system and logistics. Myron remarked that the outlook for Ukraine in this regard is grim at now. As for artillery shells, Russia anticipates a lengthy conflict. Thus artillery rounds will be essential given Russia's strategy. Even if supplies are running short, Russia will continue to replenish them. With manufacturers working three shifts, domestic production has increased. As we have seen with drones and now missiles, Russia will also attempt to acquire whatever is required to continue fighting overseas. Therefore, it would be irresponsible to gauge the length of Russia's engagement in Ukraine based on current ammunition stocks. Russia's political will and internal dynamics are more crucial. These criteria will determine Russia's fighting capability.